Hello, kids, and welcome to the July edition of the Storytelling Sessions by us, the volunteers of the Jane Goodall Institute, right here in Singapore. As always, I'm Safari Sid. Hello. And it is my pleasure to be hosting this month's edition of the Storytelling Sessions. And don't we have an exciting lineup of stories for you today? We have our friends at SOTA, uh, our friends at LaSalle College of the Arts, and of course, the one and only Dr. Jane Goodall, that's going to be giving you some stories today. And I'm sure you are going to enjoy every single one of them. Now, kids, who of you remembers who Dr. Jane is? Of course, I ask you this question every single month, but I'm still testing you all to make sure you know who she is and what she's done for the world and for all of us to have inspired us to come together and spend so much time wanting to really be part of this incredible, wonderful, amazing world that we live in. So does any of you remember who she is? No? Okay, well, Dr. Jane Goodall is the incredible lady who inspired all of us around the world, not just the Jane Goodall Institute in Singapore, but the Jane Goodall Institutes all over the world and many, many, many millions of others of people all over that want to come together to try and help save so many parts of this incredible world that we share, not just with the wild species, but also with many of the plants and other human beings that we share this planet with. Now, Dr. Jane's work over 60 years ago, when she was just 20 years old, led us to a revolutionary change in understanding biology, wildlife, primates, and some of the other very closely related animals to us. And of course, what we should be doing in terms of taking action to protect and to save them and to conserve these amazing species and learn how to share this planet with them as well. You know, she was only 20 years old when she left her home in the UK and went all the way part, uh, out to the eastern part of Africa, uh, to the country of Tanzania. And there she made a home at Gombe Stream National Park for many, many, many years. And what she did out there was she learned all about the incredible families of chimpanzees. Now, of course, they're very similar to human beings, just like us. They play with each other and their friends. They um, communicate with each other. They have politics and hierarchy, like I'm sure you see on TV every day. They entertain themselves and groom themselves. They learn how to make tools, just like how we have tools, like hammers and nails and chopsticks and knives and forks. They have their own version of tools to help them find food and to communicate with each other and to help them build their nests that they live in in the trees. And they're such wonderful, amazing creatures. Um, I was so lucky to be able to go out and see them several years ago and to go to exactly where Dr. Jane was doing her incredible research. And I hope, I hope that one day many of you will get the chance to go into the wilds of Africa and go to Tanzania and maybe even to Gombe Stream National Park as well. And I hope that Gombe Stream National Park will still be there like many of the other natural reserves that are threatened at the moment. And I hope that it will inspire young people and old people alike to go out there and work towards saving all these incredible wild spaces. Now, you don't have to go all the way out to Africa and Tanzania or to Gombe Stream National Park. We have wonderful wild spaces here in Singapore. Some of them are protected like our national parks, you might have been to places like uh, Bukatima Nature Reserve right, or to some of our other great parks around Singapore. And you would have seen the incredible animals we have there. We have some amazing primates uh, like the long-tailed macaque. We have the raffles banded langer or the Sunda slow loris. And we have so many other, other amazing animals and plant species that we can see and observe and appreciate out here. Now, some of the stories we're going to take you to through today are going to help you build a, an appreciation for these wild spaces and wild species out there. Our first story is by our friends at SOTA, and they've put together a wonderful story that I'm sure you're going to enjoy, uh, and it's called George. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Hello, my name is Caleb from SOTA. 
and I'll be telling the story, Finding George, in collaboration with JGIS. One day in the morning, a group of baby turtles, which have just been hatched, are trying to crawl back to sea. That's where they belong. When every turtle has left, there's one more turtle, which has just popped out of his shell. Where is everyone? The baby turtle was scared, with nobody to help him. Just as he was going to go back to sea, a man popped out of the jungle behind him and took the turtle into his hands. Ha ha ha! Today is my lucky day. How often does one get to capture a live turtle? Don't take me away. I want to go with my family. No, no, no. I won't let you go. Do you know how much money you can fetch me, huh? The turtle felt weak against the man. He could not do anything to escape. All he could do was follow the man and let the bad guy do whatever he wants to. But when the turtle felt hopeless, he saw a good man watching all this happen from behind the trees. So the turtle decided to cry for help. The nice man saw this and knew that the turtle was in trouble. He quickly ran back to his own village and told the people to help the turtle who was in big trouble. The people came together and went to save the turtle to fight off the bad guys. The good people followed the bad guy into a scary place. Stop! Why do you want a turtle? If I grow this turtle up, I'll be able to sell it for a lot of money. That is not good. The turtle should have his own freedom and be able to live by itself. No, why should I listen to you? The good guy got tired of listening to the bad guy, ignoring his request, and immediately rushed in with the other good guys and took down the bad guy, while the other people went to save the turtle. You better return this precious little turtle back to the ocean. You should never take turtles away from the beach. They help us people a lot, and taking one can damage our ecosystem. The turtles help us by making sure that there is just the right amount of animals in our sea. For example, the turtles make sure that there isn't too much jellyfish in the ocean. But if everyone takes one turtle away, there will not be enough turtles to help us. Oh, I see. I didn't know turtles are so important to us. I won't catch baby turtles ever again. I'm sorry. With that, the good people let the turtle back in the sea and the bad guy learned a very good lesson to never take wildlife. My dear friends, turtles are lovely sea creatures. They help us in a way most of us are not able to see. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, kids, didn't you enjoy that great story, Finding George, by the incredible students of SOTA? Can we give them a round of applause, please? Who liked that story, Finding George? I definitely did. Did you guys enjoy it as well? Yeah, it's a great story, wasn't it? I really hope you liked it. And once again, a very, very heartfelt thank you to all the wonderful students at SOTA for putting that lovely story together. It was really nice. Well, that's our first story, Dad and kids. And I hope that it inspired you to learn something about our wild spaces. And I hope that next time you're out and about, in these incredible places of Singapore, you might appreciate some of the wildlife, the wild species, the trees, the plants, even the fungus growing on the ground and how that all adds to the biodiversity, not just of Singapore, but of the whole world and how we're so codependent on all of these components to ensure that we can live a healthy and safe life as well as all the other wild species out here as well. Now, kids, we have another story coming up, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. It is by the wonderful, wonderful students of the Cell College of the Arts, and you would have recognized this. The students of the Cell have done so many incredible stories for us over the last few years. And this is yet another one that I hope you enjoy and take something away from, and it's called Scales. So enjoy the next animation. Hi, I'm Anais Foshe. My name is Intia. Hi, I am Soyeon from Last Style College of the Art Animation. My name is Chobie Pyu, and my friends call me Kaya. In collaboration with JGIS, my group and I decided to raise awareness about the growing numbers of animal consumption in the past few years. Ying Ti suggested pangolins and we all agreed that it wasn't a topic talked about very often in the media, even though it is the number one animal in Asia and in Singapore being poached and trafficked. I am one of the animators for this project, as well as several concept arts for it. 
I was mainly responsible for the character design of the short film. I was in charge of animating the two last scenes. I'm in charge of a second scene. I'm also in charge of a background. We did a lot of research about pangolins and illegal trading to give our message through a visual film. We hope you can enjoy watching this film and join to protect them together. Thank you. One fine day, a starving pangolin wanders around looking for food. Luckily, he found his lunch for the day, the ants on a tree trunk. However, He finds himself trapped in a cage with other pangolins. One by one, they're taken away from their cages. An intimidating hand approaches him. Where is he going? Into a bowl of an exotic dish? Or into a jar as medicine? What wrong did he do to end up like this? He was just hungry and looking for food. Trading pangolins is illegal, yet more than 2.7 million pangolins are poached every year for scales and meat. If you see a pangolin in captivity, please contact Acres at 9783-7782 or NPARKS at 1-800-476-1600. Together, we can prevent another pangolin from the same fate. That was a great story, wasn't it, kids? I hope you learned something about that wonderful animation called Scales by the students of the Cell College of the Arts. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you, students of the Cell College of the Arts. And as a matter of fact, they have done a lot of great animations for us over the years. And I really want to take a second to appreciate how incredibly talented the young students are at the Cell College of the Arts and how much they've contributed to us a charitable institute. They've spent their time volunteering and really being so passionate about the situation right now and about these incredible wild species that we have in Singapore and around the world. Now kids, just like them, the rest of us here at the Jane Goodall Institute are all volunteers. We passionately give up our time so that we can help the broader group of people like yourselves enjoy these stories and learn something about the world and learn something about these amazing species. Now, kids, you know, you can be part of the Jane Goodall Institute. You can even be part of the Roots and Shoots program, which is specifically designed for younger kids like yourselves. Here in Singapore, we do a lot of work. We do walks in the park, like the park behind me. We go through places like McRitchie, we go to places like uh, Bukatima, and we look for all the incredible primates that we can see out here. We do a lot of citizen science programs, and that's where people like ourselves, who aren't really scientists as such, go out there and observe and learn and document things so that we can take it back, and that all gets turned into very useful information for us to learn about the natural world. And that's been a really, really helpful project to do. And the Jane Goodall Institute gets very involved in such things. You could come along and join me and, and the rest of us here, be a storyteller. Or you could even just draw a picture or write a little story or tell us something that you've learned about the natural world and send it over to us. You can ask your mummies and daddies to contact us on social media, like our Instagram or our Facebook page, or you can email us or even jump on our website and leave some comments. 
We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to have you on our show as well. We've had so many of you join us and send things in and submit things. You can come and be a presenter like myself if you'd like to do that. We would love to have you as a part of the Jane Goodall Institute or even the Roots and Shoots program. And Mummies and Daddies, it's the same for you as well. You can come and join us. You can help us with anything from finance to social media to being part of our management com committee as a charity. Or you could have us come along to one of your corporate events and do stories or do some educational talks. We have a lot of scientists. Uh, we have Dr. Andy Ang, who is our current president, and she is a world-renowned primatologist. And so, so, so helpful and such a huge contributor. And many, many, many others that are part of the Jane Goodall Institute that add so much value. So we would love to be a part of your world and we would love you to come and join us as a part of our world as well. Now, coming up next, you are all so lucky to have another very special story. And this time it's told to us by the founder of the Jane Goodall Institute, of course, none other than Dr. Jane Goodall herself. And she'll be telling you chimpanzee family. So enjoy the next story. Hello, this is Jane Goodall. And as many of you know, I spent many, many years studying these chimpanzees and I did a little series of books and this was the first one and that's what I want to read to you today. It's called Chimpanzee Family by Jane Goodall and it's part of an animal series and the photographs were selected by a super friend of mine who's a photographer, uh, Michael Neugebauer. And so this is the book I'm going to read to you. This is Fifi with her daughters four-year-old Flossie and nine-year-old Fanny. Chimpanzee mothers love their infants very much and continue to care for them as the children grow up. Fifi's two older sons, Frodo and Freud, still like to spend a lot of time with their mother. Fifi and her family live in Gombe National Park, Tanzania, where I've been watching chimpanzees since 1960. Fifi was just an infant then, now she's about 30 years old. There are about 45 chimpanzees in Fifi's group and they all know each other. Sometimes they get together to feed on delicious fruits. It's like a big party. The adults call loudly <laughs> and they scream ah, ah! and that's what happens when a lot of chimps meet up together and they charge about in excitement while the young ones play, chasing each other through the trees and on the ground. Then they all settle down to feed. When they feel full and contented, they sit comfortably and groom each other. They pick out little bits of dry skin or small ticks. This grooming doesn't just keep their coats clean, the gentle stroking movements make them relax. And after a while, they take a nap. Chimpanzee mothers spend a lot of time away from the group, just with their own families. Fifi is a very playful female and is always ready for a game with her daughters. They tickle each other, just like we do, and laugh. <laughs> Soon another young mother joins Fifi for a while. This is Gremlin with her little son Galahad, who's five months old. Galahad is just learning to walk and climb. Gremlin makes sure that he stays close by so she can rescue him quickly if he gets into trouble. Gremlin has an older brother named Goblin. I first met Goblin when he was a tiny baby. Now he's the boss. There are five other big males in the group and they all respect Goblin. The males protect the land where Fifi, Gremlin and all the others live so that they can feel safe. Fifi doesn't stay with Gremlin and Goblin for long. She sets off again and she and her daughters climb to feed on figs. Chimpanzees like all different kinds of foods, leaves and flowers and stems and bark, also insects and sometimes a little bit of meat but they eat more fruit than anything else. Chimps are like us in a lot of ways. When they greet, they hug and kiss. 
when one is frightened or sad, his friend comforts him by patting his back or holding his hand. They can think and work out problems, like how to feed on the termites under the ground. They use blades of grass or little twigs as tools. The termites bite on, the chimp pulls out the tool and then picks the termites off. The young ones learn by watching their mothers. Flossie is tired after her long busy day and Fifi carries her on her back. She rides there like a little jockey. Soon Fifi will make a nest for the night, a comfortable platform of leafy branches. Flossie will snuggle up with her mother. Fanny will make her own little nest nearby. The chimpanzees at Gombe are lucky, for they're protected. In other parts of Africa, the forests are being cut down. People want to build houses there or grow crops, and they sell the trees for timber. Some people hunt chimps to eat them, and sometimes they shoot the mothers to capture the babies for zoos or circuses or for research. That is very cruel. The chimpanzees need all the help we can give them, or before too long they will all be gone from the wild. And so I hope that you enjoyed that book and I'll read you some more, but that's the first one in this in the series. And I'll say goodbye for now. Was a great story, wasn't it, kids? Did you enjoy the way Dr. Jane Goodall tells us these amazing stories and how we can learn so much from her? She's an incredible storyteller, actually. And as a matter of fact, that was one of the very, very important components that she wanted to teach us. We go through so many stories in our lives. We can make a story up about a walk to school or the lunch that we had, or a little ant that we saw crawling on the wall. There's a story in everything. We just have to learn the art to be able to tell that story, just like how Dr. Jane is. Now, we don't start as being as amazing as Dr. Jane, but we can start somewhere. Maybe you can tell your mummies and daddies a really, really cool story of something that you saw at school today, or something that you thought about while you were having your lunch. There's a story in so many areas and it's so wonderful to hear stories. So we would love you to share some of those stories with us. As I said, you can write it in. You can tell your story in um, art form by drawing it. You can maybe take photos and tell us the story of what your photos are, are speaking to. We'd love to hear from you, we really would. And we'd love to feature it on maybe one of our storytelling sessions if you can get it to us. Once again, you can email it to us or send it to us over our social media channels or find us on our website. And once again, mummies and daddies, always looking for volunteers and we'd love to have you as a part of the Jane Goodall Institute in Singapore. You have many skills, I'm sure, that bring you here and to watching us and you must clearly have an interest. And I'm sure you'd love to share that with us. And we would love to share that them with the rest of our audience as well. Of course, mummies and daddies, we are a charitable organization and we also accept donations. It's what keeps us going. It pays for the equipment and it pays for us to be able to produce these wonderful storytelling sessions. Now you can find out how you can donate to the Jane Goodall Institute on our website, or you can email us for more details about it. But every dollar donated is greatly appreciated and it goes towards a wonderful cause of protecting and conserving this amazing natural world. Now kids, this brings us to the end of July's storytelling sessions. Did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the stories? Did you think those wonderful students of SOTA and LaSalle College of the Arts kept us entertained and that you learned something from their amazing stories? How about we give them one more round of applause and give them a yay. Come on. Thank you very much. And once again, I hope you were inspired by the incredible Dr. Jane Goodall that keeps us all going and truly, truly inspired to continue this work. Now kids, we like to thank you so much for tuning in and we really do hope you join us for August session. 
So once again, I am Safari Sid, and thank you for joining all of us here at the Jane Goodall Institute for July's storytelling session. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.